Welcome back to MVM. Today I have a new game set on the table. This is Spark Riders 3000. This is a cooperative dice rolling game where you are working together with your teammates to sail your ship through the stars and protect yourself from alien attack. So this entire game takes place on a modular spaceship which is built here in front of me and you're going to see that it's made up of a bunch of different rooms. You're going to see these really meaty miniatures that make up the characters and you're going to see a variety of player boards, cards, tokens, and dice. A lot of the things that you would expect to see in a cooperative game like this. Now you're going to be playing through a series of different missions, each with their own goals. You're going to be moving around these different rooms, trying to take actions within these rooms, keep the engines running, keep the ship flying in the cockpit, watching out for dangerous alien invasions. And you're doing a lot of that by rolling dice and by taking actions on your player board with your unique character. Each character kind of has a different specialization. So there are a lot of things happening here that you might expect to see in this kind of cooperative game. However, those missions are all run by Iris. And you see Iris right here on my phone, ready to go. And this is one of the most innovative things I have ever seen in a digital implementation of a board game. Now, we're no strangers at this point to games that have app companions or things that run the game digitally. But what you have here is literally Iris. This is the ship's AI computer, and it is going to talk to you and communicate with you throughout the course of the game. Iris will give you instructions as far as telling you what's happening with the specific scenario you're on. Iris is going to tell you when aliens appear and attack you. We'll talk about that. Iris is going to tell you what kind of terrain you're flying through. She's going to tell you the results of a lot of your different actions. So a lot of what you're doing is going to go through Iris. But what makes this very unique is that you can actually talk to Iris. You can talk to the ship's computer. I know that's kind of like a wild thing and it's kind of, you know, maybe just feels uh, kind of surface level, but it, it makes the game feel so thematic. When you're moving your character through this ship and you're taking all of these different actions and you're literally reporting out to Iris, asking for updates on the ship, telling Iris what you're doing, how well your roles went, Iris actually uses the microphone on your tablet or phone or whatever device you're using, that she uses that to actually capture what you're trying to say. And there are a variety of different prompts that you can give Iris to get different effects out. A lot of the actions that you're going to take, a lot of the rooms that you're going to interact with, a lot of them have their own unique prompts to tell Iris something that's going to happen. Now, if you don't like that idea of talking into a phone, you can type the prompts in as well. There is a keyboard function that's going to let you just generically type in, but just trust me, it is very thematic feeling to be talking to Iris. And of course, the app is gonna provide music, sound effects, all the things that you would expect in the app. It's also going to control all of the enemy AI. It's going to tell you which part of the ship gets damaged and what happens when that damage happens. It's going to tell you which alien ships come out and how strong they are. Each of these alien ships is going to come in a variety of different colors that indicate a variety of different difficulties. They're going to have their own shields, their own attack strength, their own dice to roll for dealing damage to you. So all of that stuff is going to be present on these alien cards. There's also just a variety of other cards and effects that Iris might tell you to put into play, including some environments to move through and things like that. Now, these ships are going to come into play and they're going to be moving around to different sides of the ship in order to deal damage. And of course, your goal is to protect that ship as best as possible by mitigating all of the damage that the aliens are doing and potentially even shooting these alien ships out of the sky by taking actions on the board. So while they're doing damage on the ship, you're trying to repair it. You're also trying to fight off these aliens as they move around the table and of course as more aliens come out and you're trying to complete whatever your objective is there will be rooms of the ship and you can see here on iris like a blueprint of the ship every turn iris is going to tell you if there's damage or some kind of catastrophe that you have to deal with in any one particular area of the ship iris is also going to track how far your ship has moved you're going to have to survive moving a certain distance in order to complete the mission. If your ship is destroyed before you make it there, well then too bad, you lose the game. However, you're giving a lot of ways to mitigate these disasters, not only by moving around and taking actions, you're gonna see a lot of construction cards at the top that are gonna let you build things like 
shield generators or turrets outside, lasers that'll let you fire off at the different aliens. You can kind of upgrade that ship over the course of the game. You can gain prosperity cards, which you can use to power up your actions. And of course, everyone has their own special abilities. Like I mentioned earlier, everyone is good at something different. They're better at using one of these different rooms. And each one of these different rooms is tied to kind of some of these different dice. You're going to be rolling these different dice based on what room you're in and kind of you'll see the color there. So some of these are gonna let you repair. Some of them are gonna let you do damage. Some of them are gonna give you shield. Some of them are gonna let you pilot the ship, which is kind of an important thing to do. A lot of these actions have a different level that you can take them at or, or a few different things you can do. For example, whoever's in the cockpit piloting, you can do more defensive piloting, or you can pilot for speed and just kind of ignore your defenses and gun it. You get to choose that, and you're going to be rolling dice. So let me talk about how a very specific action works. Let's use that piloting as an example. First, you need to be in the cockpit, and we're gonna move Igor to the cockpit, because if you see on Igor's player board here, he has an ability for being in the cockpit. He is a better flyer than anybody else, so it would make sense for him to kind of handle those flying duties. So whenever he's rolling dice, he's gonna to get to add one success to the roll. Just like with any other skill check in the game or any one of these other room actions, you're gonna decide what type of action you're going to wanna to do. So let's say that there are a lot of enemy ships around right now. Igor is going to go into more of an offensive piloting role. He's gonna just try to pilot offensively so we can take down some of these enemy ships. Now Igor is gonna roll this die and we'll see what his result is. Now he rolled two successes on his piloting die, plus he gets one bonus success. So he ended up with a total of three successes. Each one of these successes indicates a level of performance, level one to three. So in this case, Igor actually hit level three with piloting. So if we're going to do that offensive piloting, we have to tell Iris that we're doing that. So then we can come over here and we can talk to Iris and you'll see this little button that says, talk to Iris. We'll click that and then she's waiting to hear what we have to say. So we can say, Iris, offensive piloting, level three, over. Stabilizers deactivated. Offensive maneuver authorized. Change two enemies to another side. Now, when you're done taking your actions, when everyone has gone through and taken their actions, there's actually a button to move on to the next turn. Iris is gonna tell you how far you've moved and what happens as far as if there are any rooms that Distance are damaged, covered. if there are any aliens that need AU. to be dealt with. Left thruster degradation. Current level one. Speed greatly reduced. Maintenance required. Aggravation of the observatory condition. Cause. Succession of unforeseen events. Assistance required. Place code red card on board. Asteroid field detected. Distance. 635 AU. Yellow enemy ship arrives to the left. One shot to the middle. Enemy ship in approach. Color. Blue. Firepower level. One. Armor level. Three. Up to you. So as you can see, there's quite a bit that can happen in between every one of those rounds. And you're gonna have to mitigate that. So Iris is telling you kind of what to do, where to move the enemy ships, whether to put different tokens on the board, and you're telling Iris the result of all of your different die rolls and actions and things like that. Now, this is gonna go back and forth until potentially the ship is destroyed, in which case you lose, or whether or not you complete the mission. And a lot of those missions are going to require you to have reached a certain distance on that distance traveled tracker like I was talking about without having your ship destroyed by all these different aliens. So you're really gonna have to work together. This is a fully cooperative game if that wasn't obvious by now. And like I said, even though every character does have a special ability or, or a special, especially good at one thing, you can't just sit there and do the one thing you're good at. You're going to have to move around and you're going to have to mitigate these disasters as they come up because you don't know what the next turn is going to look like. Now, luckily each character can kind of leave these help tokens behind. Once per turn, they can kind of help each other and work together, which is kind of a huge deal because it gets really, really tight in this game. And you're going to be having to mitigate things in an order that you decide is maybe the most important. Maybe repairing the ship is more important than dealing with shooting at the enemies. Maybe piloting to try to get that last little distance before you blow up is what's most important. But you're gonna to have to decide that without knowing what your next turn is going to look like. So there's a lot of excitement in the discovery of that because you're gonna be having disasters occur and this enemy ship show up kind of randomly. Now it is kind of, you know, terrifying to not know what's coming up next. And like, those aren't the best kind of surprises, but it is really neat that it's all being told to you by this app and that you're checking in with that onboard computer, talking back and forth with the onboard computer. It really does nail in that sci-fi theme. This game is light, accessible, very easy to learn, and since the app handles a lot of the bookkeeping, 
All you really need to worry about is taking your actions and then reporting them back to the app, which basically anyone can do. Even uh, those kiddos with just a little bit of help could easily be rolling the dice and being part of this game. So this is Spark Riders 3000. There's still a few days left to grab this on Kickstarter, so make sure to hit the last 48 hours. But if you miss that, I'm sure you'll be able to get this game in the future when it comes to late pledging or retail or whatever stay tuned to the description below for more details on how to get your hands on this game if, if you like that technology in a game definitely kind of check this out because it uses technology in a very very cool way so thank you so much for watching along with me today please leave any questions and comments down below we'd love it if you would join our discord so we can talk about this game and other hot new games and as always until i see you again keep having fun at the table Congratulations, you got to the end of one of our videos. Now, if you want more practice, just click on the video over here. It's another video. You might not have seen it yet, so click on it. If you don't want to do that, at least click on the subscription button below. That always helps us. And if you want notifications, please ring that bell.